And Stevens in particular has a great history and reputation for working at the nexus of government, industry, and academia. You know, a lot of universities you work with are, I'll say, ivory towers, very focused on the academic side of things. Um, but Stevens has managed to, through their research, through their relationships with, um, with government organizations, with companies, to really become a, a forum for a dialogue, an important dialogue, um, that, they're, that they host. And so that kind of partnership uh, lets us all have a common di um, dialogue without any seams, if you will, in that discussion. Um, so clearly that's a big part of it. You know, more broadly working with Stevens to think about what is the future workforce for Lockheed Martin, um, need to look like and need to know, and then helping to shape the curriculum uh, and helping to think through the research agenda so that um, together we can say, okay, you know, 20 years from now we're going to need graduates who understand, let's say, energy solutions uh, or some other healthcare information systems or not 20 years, you know, two years. Um, and so what does that mean to a curriculum? What are the building blocks of success in that field and helping to shape that? Of course, the greatest impact in shaping the future is on the students. And, um, and that impact, you, you really can't strongly enough state the importance of um, you know, people to developing technical solutions to, to, in our case, global security challenges. And so Stephen's impact uh, is heavily through the students and, and the people and the skills and the talents that they're able to bring out and to coax and to uh, and then work with others when they get to industry or government or wherever else they go, nonprofits, to to have an impact. More broadly, the research agenda is absolutely critical. Uh, understanding what are the needs in system engineering, what are the issues, the emerging issues in systems engineering, what's the impact of a rise in complexity, you know, for example, in our systems, and how do you manage that complexity? Um, all of these research issues will directly impact the solutions that we develop um, you know, for decades to come. Lockheed Martin's been around for a hundred years and so and will be um, for a long time to come and so um, thinking ahead to the issues of tomorrow, addressing them with a, a coherent integrated research agenda um, that we work together on is a tremendous impact across the entire industry uh, that Stevens has. One thing that you, you get at Stevens in particular is all this history. You're part of an unbroken chain of, of engineers and technologists that have led the way in the industrial revolution, the, the transportation revolution, the communications revolution, the information revolution. And so you're part of this unbroken chain of leadership. And you know, I, I want to say appreciate that. Know that, you're, um, know that you're part of that history and, and learn from it. But the interesting thing that's happened in just the past few decades with the broadening of, of connectivity throughout the community is that you're also now part in another dimension of a global community of engineers and technologists. And that rich fabric that is both temporal um, and, I'll say, uh, horizontal in extent across the globe, uh, which Stevens has been a forerunner in building those ties that bind and bond the engineering community. Um, that's a rich fabric and you know the days of Edwin Stevens working you know to build a steam engine uh, in, his, in his basement or wherever he built it, uh, those days of course are gone. We build complex systems now, we evolve complex systems, we manage complex systems and you have to do that in the context of, of a truly rich um, tapestry of capability, of global capability um, and historic capability. Um, so my advice is um, you know be an active part of that community, you know, recognize that, build on it, be a leader in that community. And then, even more importantly, that's, there's another dimension as well to the two that I just mentioned, which is working with other communities, with the arts, with uh, politicians, with lawyers, with financiers, with communicators. Um, <clears throat> you know, that working uh, as an engineering and technology community in concert with those other communities to really address significant global challenges because we have all these tools now. We have the raw materials to solve problems that have vexed mankind for centuries, um, hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, but it really requires a joint effort to bring it forward. So when I'm asked by engineers, you know, what's the most important thing to focus on, I say communications. Um, and it's not something that comes natural to many engineers and technologists. You know, we have a reputation for being somewhat introverted and not being um, uh, great communicators. But what I tell them is that each and every one of them has something they want to do. Each and every one of them has a dream. Each and every one of them has something they want to accomplish. 
but it doesn't matter unless you can voice it. You can't give voice to it and articulate it for others to work in that three-dimensional space I just mentioned with other people uh, from different disciplines around the world. Uh, if you can't articulate it, then it's not going to happen. It's not going to come into reality. Uh, and you have to work on that. It doesn't come naturally to most engineers. But I tell them, you know, first and foremost, learn to communicate. If you want to advance as an engineering leader, you have to learn to speak the languages of the financiers and, and politicians and, and, and so forth so that together we can address these problems and advance society. But communications is just the cornerstone for that. So, so what do we look for in addition to clearly the, um, the academic credentials? Um, again, an ability to work on a team and to communicate clearly throughout that team uh, in order to get projects done. Uh, and Stevens does a lot of great work with design projects, the senior design project, other capstone activities that really teach students that, you know, again, nobody solves these huge problems on their own. You know, you got to learn to work with others um, in order to advance them. Uh, and so clearly communication skills, um, leadership skills, and, and over time an understanding of the business is very important. Uh, you need to understand the business models uh, in order to create solutions that will ultimately add value to society. And so another thing that we don't really expect out of school, but that we work on once folks are out of school, uh, is, a, is a savviness in um, the ability to understand business models and how finance works uh, and um, how to move forward your interests and, and get them funded. Um, but, you know, off the top of my head, communication skills, um, teamwork skills, which are tightly coupled. Um, another great thing is an appreciation for diversity, for the power of diversity, uh, which Stevens, through its um, curriculum and its campus and its students and its outreach internationally, really does bring to the table that we're solving problems now, addressing problems that are global in scope. And in order to address them, you need to bring to bear the full extent of human thought and human expression. And so you need to be able to work with others who don't think and look like you. Um, and so Stevens has been great at advancing that, um, that ability among their students and fostering that notion of the importance of diversity on teams. And so we look for that as well, and Stevens provides it. So.